So Charlie Wilmoth is going to be, he's been doing his own podcast. You might have heard him on Live of the Bike, right? Charlie, I mean, you've been commentating for Live of the Bike for what, a couple of years now, something like that? Yep, a couple of years. So Charlie has been doing this poker podcast, Third Man Walking, and he's going to be bringing it to Crash Live Poker. Uh, and it's going to come out a couple times a month, probably most likely the first and the third Wednesday of each month. And it's going to be free. And what we're trying to do, so it's either going to be sort of out on the site, most likely the first week of April, possibly March 16th. We're just um, still trying to figure out sort of migrating the uh, RSS feed, but you should be able to just find it, you know, for free. It should be seamless for people that already subscribe to his podcast, and then it will come on Crush Live Poker as well. It'll be in our catch-all feed. It'll be in all our feeds. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks for having me today. Yeah, so Charlie, you play full-time, right, pretty much? 30, 40 hours a week, something like that? Uh, yeah, probably more like 40. For, probably more like 40. And where do you play out of and what stakes do you usually play? Play in, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, and I play... Uh, I, I grinded 5-5 five, five for a year after I got here, probably, and now play 5-10 all the way up to whatever the, the biggest good game is. Whatever the biggest good game is. We were talking privately. I wanted to talk to you about this because you sort of came in right when I left, or you were here about maybe a year in LA, maybe for a year. I just find it interesting that the state of LA poker, how it's changed because when I lived there from 2003 to 2019, all the action pretty much was at the commerce. I mean, the bike had a little bit of action, but all of the limit action was at commerce. I'm talking about 20, 40 plus 40, 80, 60, 120, all the big, no limit. And they had opened their hotel area up, I think in 2002, which was just perfect for them right around the time of the poker boom flip forward 16 or 17 years later they're the only casino that didn't really renovate. The place is kind of a shithole. And the bike pretty much took all the action. And they don't even play poker up in that hotel area. It's all California games. With that being said, though, Commerce still has a strong 5 to 1500, 510 game, which is really where I cut my teeth at, Charlie. And that's kind of the game that you like to go to because it's very consistent, right? Right. And uh, Commerce is, is mostly the... For the, as far as I know, it's the only place that, that has like a, a 10 20 that runs almost every day. So it, uh, it but it runs it over on the small side, right? Yes, it, it there, those games are right by the, the 510 now. Huh. So interesting. I mean, I look on Poker Atlas on the bike and I see larger games too. Maybe they're quasi private, but I'm just so amazed that the uh, they're mostly the, private, yeah. The limit games like 40 80 61 21 two big mix games are all over at the bike. It's incredible. Of course, the bike has that back room now that's been around for a couple of years, but that's sort of the state of LA poker. Of course, the drop just keeps going up and up and up. I don't know if it's six plus one plus one plus one or five plus one plus one. Uh, obviously the game is beatable at five ten, but I mean, man, even at $5 blind games, like with a 500 cap, it's beatable. It's just hard to win a ton, right? Yeah. And you know, you've talked about how in other markets, you know, a $5 blind game might be kind of tough mm -hmm. uh, because the best players in that, that city are going to be playing in that game, whereas that's certainly not the case in LA. Right. And that's true. But when you have a 500 cap and you have the drop as it is in LA, it's really just an uphill battle against those factors the entire time. And it doesn't really matter that some of the better players in the city are not in those games. Just because the rate just eats you alive, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you don't really get much of a respite if it's ever shorthanded either. And then even when you go below that, it's just insane. Like when you go below that, like two, three, 300 max, I mean, maybe you can beat it for a couple of dollars an hour. Of course, there are um, a couple of places where the $5 blind level is a 1K cap, like at the bike and like at Hustler, I think it's 500 at Commerce and Hollywood Park. And then I don't know what they're doing over at Hawaiian Gardens. So I always look at it as a full-time player. Like if you were playing $5 blind 1K cap, it's really hard to like peg down an hourly. I mean, you could say over a sample of 35, 40 hours a week, but it just would seem to me that the time of day, location, game factors just makes the variables so dependent. I mean, the variables are so much different 
that it's really hard to, to, to peg down. Like you could maybe play 15 hours a week of five, five at the best times. And you know, who knows, make 70 bucks an hour. And then you might play 40 hours a week and really only make like 40 bucks an hour. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about right. I mostly play during the day and I, I definitely give up some win rate for having, for doing that, but it's, it's worth it to me just in terms of, of quality of life to, to be able to come home in, in the evening. Right, right and and have a, a sort of normal schedule so what's the euro scene like these days over there um it's there are times when it's really bad and times when it's not so bad and you really just want to make hay when the sh when the sun shines and and play as many hours as possible when it's not bad or find a casino where uh there there's not uh there are not a lot a lot of european players mm -hmm. i think the 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 emergence of of texas and some other markets throughout the u.s has probably helped some in that it's it's helped disperse these guys around to a bunch of different markets instead uh, of them all just coming to LA <laughs> or, <laughs> right? or Las Vegas right 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 yeah that's I mean I've seen I've heard of DC uh MGM you know in Washington Southern Florida um Texas obviously uh and now all, the uh no limit cap has been lifted in Arizona as well and right said yeah I mean it's going there too a lot of there, yeah. There's a lot of places for these people to go now. Yeah, interesting. So again, uh, yeah, Charlie, I'm very excited to bring Third Man Walking, which is you know, a podcast to be about being a professional. Obviously, Charlie, you go over some hands, but you talk about what it's like, and it's easily consumable, right? Like 20, 30 minutes long. Yeah, I like to keep it short, and I I uh, really labor over every episode, so I'm trying to pack a lot into those thirty minutes. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's, it's very consumable and, and the archives are very consumable, I think. Yeah. All right. So you got a hand for us here? Yeah. So this is a, a river spot that I I've just gone back and forth with my friends who are good professional poker players and there's not a lot of agreement on what to do. So I, I wanted to get your take here okay. on this river. So we're playing five tenant commerce. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't write down the exact stacks, but I'm 1700 effective. Okay. Um, so it, we're playing eight handed and under the gun. I don't know this player. He has not opened much in the hour or hour and a half. He's been at the table raises to 40 to 40. Okay. Kind of a mm -hmm. little bit large. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the button calls. Okay. And he's a uh, fairly loose, aggressive player. And I'm in the small blind with King queen of hearts. Okay. And I think, you know, maybe we could we could skip over this or we could discuss it if you want. I mean, I, I think this is I think there are arguments for raising and for calling here. Um, and I went with call because I didn't know a lot about the under the gun player, but he was raising under the gun. He raised fairly large. And. Yeah, it seems like if we're going to have a call range here, this this hand is fine to put it in. I think it would be more of a function whether or not I call or raise here as a three bet. Although I think King Queen suit is really good. Like I think it starts to get cuspy like a King Jack King 10 suited. Uh, so I, I think it's a function of how loose you think the button plays. You said he was a lag. That's that first caller, right? The button. Right. Mm -hmm. So that whole overlay of three betting when you've got a dead call in there, sometimes I just think that this one's probably too good for me not to three bet. I might start thinking about not three betting. Like I said, King Jack suited, King 10 suited, you might have an over call. I just think the King, King Queen suited is really good, but I can sort of get on board with what you're saying. Like if you had a super nitty guy open from under the gun and, um, even if you did have a loose guy on the button call, you might start to take some of those those sort of the bottom parts of what would be a three bet range and put them into a into a call range. Right, and I, I just have limited uh, information on the opener. My my impression is that he's playing fairly tight, but I I really don't know. I don't have the sample. Well, then I would probably three bet, but you know, it's all good. All right, so we go to the flop. Yeah, so about 125 in there yep. after the drop, going to uh -huh. the flop, and it comes king queen king king queen with two spades. What was that again? King, queen, queen? King, king, queen. Wow. King, king, queen with two spades. Well, you've hit the hell out of it, huh? Yeah, we, we, we run good. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I check uh -huh. the preflop raiser bet 75. And now here's where the hand starts to get weird because the button who can be very full of it here, uh, raises to 200. Wow. Okay. Um, 
so I, I, I call, I don't know. <laughs> By the way, so the, so the button, I mean, you guys are all 1700, right? The button's got you covered too. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he does. I mean, here's the thing, obviously. I mean, yeah, I mean, it seems standard to just call. What can, what else can you do? The only thing I would say about when you say he could be full of it and, and you know, maybe he can be full of it in this spot. I would tend to think that that frequency of he can be full of it might be more prevalent on a board that is not as good for the preflop brazier, meaning like the board came seven, out seven seven five six six four. I was gonna say six six four seven seven five, same type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, for someone to be full of it on a board like this, where someone can have ace king very easily as the preflop brazier, is is not all that common. I will say, but I don't think that you can really do anything but call, right? I mean, what else can you do, <laughs> right? You just block I mean, you the hell just, out of everything. Right. I mean, you, you can just pray that you're cooling somebody and raise, but yeah, I think calling is probably the best play. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could do that. The only thing that I would say is, is that if, if there ever was combo draws from the button that was raising like Jack 10 of spades, ace Jack of spades, ace 10 of spades, it would be pretty big shitty if you three bet them out of the hand right agreed right? you know and uh you know if you call it's interesting charlie like if you put yourself in the under the gun spot let's say you have ace king and mm -hmm. you put yourself in the under the gun spot here and this action happened in front of you where you see bet the button raised and the small blind called what would you do here if you were under the gun um would you bet three bet or I don't know. I mean, because they can have every combo of king queen, really. But I mean, and... how often is somebody? You mean? Oh, you'd be scared of yourself, basically, in this hand, right? In the small blind, I assume. Yeah, the, the I mean, not, not not scared necessarily, but maybe, uh, yeah, a little bit wary of of king queen precisely, and scared of chasing away my action for the same reason that um, I don't necessarily want to put it, me as me in the small blind doesn't necessarily want to put in a, a three bet here and chase off. Any right. kind of draws this guy might have. What about queen queen? That would be a fun hand to put in a three bet with, I think, mm -hmm. because Unblocking you the unblock. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you call, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so three ways still to a, tur to so, a turn. So under the gun all over calls. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, wow. he over calls. Wow. Yeah. What does that guy have? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, sure looks like he has a king, right? Yeah, you would think so, right? Or some kind of very strong draw. Somebody, this really should be someone has a king, or, or right? One person has a king, because you've got the other king, and then someone's got like a royal draw, right? I mean, this is what this should be. I, you, I you guess the other guy could have queen, queen, the under the gun guy too, right? Mm -hmm. well, one combo. One combo, yeah. Right, right. I mean, so 200, so the pot's like 725, right? Something right. Like yeah. So the turn is an offsuit five. Um, okay. I check and it checks through. Well, that would seem to me like that button's got the uh, the combo draw, right? Wouldn't we think? Or he was just totally full of it, maybe? Again, one, not one of those common. two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting because I think what's going to end up happening here is how this river is going to play out, right? We don't know what the river is. I mean, I know you told me an email. I don't remember what it is, but I just want to kind of think of some things here because you, obviously you're very full with live experience. And I think what some people would say here, Charlie, like say, for example, the river is the nine of spades, right? Now on paper, on king, queen, king, queen, spade, spade, on paper, you would think, well, it's pretty obvious that the button here probably has a draw or maybe he's trying to represent a draw. So if the spade comes in, I'm just going to check and because then you know he'll bat and i can i can check raise and that makes perfect logical sense but i don't know if you can get on board with me here charlie the the issue that i found in live poker though is that guys will just check behind like especially in this case because they're scared that somebody's sandbagging them yeah i mean it, it's quite possible and mm -hmm. it's 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 a hard it's a hard river spot to gauge out of position for exactly that reason not knowing exactly how your opponents are going to respond to their perceived hand strength. Right. So, I mean, you know, if the river came in one of those spades, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I could obviously, I can see checking, but 
And then the, the problem sometimes too is if you go for a check raise and then the guy somehow bet folds, like you make more by just coming out and betting pot and getting called. Right. But what is the river? The river is an offsuit nine. An offsuit nine. Okay. Yeah. So it completes jack 10, but doesn't complete the front door spades. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That is yeah, so this is the spot where I, I don't really know what to do. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think one thing working from in my favor in terms of hoping someone will bet is the fact that there are two opponents rather than just one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is pretty likely that the under the gun player has a king. But right. I don't know if that means right. that, that checking and hoping to check raise is the best play. So someone should have a king here and it would be most likely be the under the gun, right? I mean, it's not, never really going to be the button unless the button is really scared. Like, he raised with, like, King-10, and he was like, oh, shit, like, I'm actually scared here, right? Because remember, the flop went raise, call, call, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> um, which is really incredible when you think about it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, under the gun, you know, if you're under the gun, I'll, I'll flip it back to you again. If you're under the gun and you just called on the flop with Ace-King, would you bet the river here? If yes. If check to in the middle? For sure, because... I would be thinking that the small blind could have a king with a worse kicker. Right. And you thought the button was kind of full of shit and missed like a like a combo drawn and the small blind's not going to fold out like king jack, right? King 10. And remember you flatted pre, so maybe one of those sort of, you know, suited connecting types of things. The only problem is is that it's not you playing, right? <laughs> from under right. the gun. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the guy from over there. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I, here's my take. My take is that I just default. I've just seen so many people check through hands that probably should warrant value bets that I don't like to take the the risk. And I, I might just go pretty much like 600, 700. And then some, I just, I don't think someone's going to fold the king at this level. Because when you start to get try to get tricky with it and go for a check raise, again, you have to get a bet. And then if somebody goes like half to like even three quarters then they have to call it they they have to bet and call a check raise for that to be better those two things have to come into play to be better than just coming out and betting and getting called you know by yourself now this is not a super high stakes hand just this is kind of mid to high stakes but it's like la live so it's kind of fun to try to kind of tackle what is the the best way to approach this situation to win the most amount of money right i think one other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is that uh, the the button is an aggressive player, especially post flop. He's quite opportunistic, and if we do bet, we deny him the opportunity to bluff with any kind of whiffed spades he might have. I, maybe that's too ambitious, but with this particular guy, it might not be. Well, I mean, I would say that like that flop action is so strong. Who in their right mind would would ever try right. to bluff busted spades? But then again, who's checking here? Both of you guys are checking. But you know, it doesn't, especially to a recreational player, it doesn't look like someone has a king because they would always just bet off right at the end with a king mm -hmm. um, from up front after this action. So, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. I think I would lean towards more of a, a large bet. So, did you check? I did check. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so what ended up happening was the under the gun player bet 200 and the button folded really small. Wow. Yeah. And so I, I think this bet sizing is kind of a tell. Well, it's ace king, right? Um, it seems small for ace king. I think don't so? know. Mm, yeah. I'm, you maybe. mean you would go I'm, larger here? You'd go like four, something like that? I would. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I mean, I, I think I can rule out Jack 10 probably even, uh -huh. uh, and he certainly doesn't have a boat. Um, so I think when it comes around to me, he's he's capped to some sort of king. And I need to raise to a size that he can call with that. Well, I mean, I remember last week when I was I kept pointing to this hand that Tiger played. I don't know how often you watch Hustler Casino uh, live streams. Tiger flopped a joint. It was on our best of reel from the video that I put up last week, you know, with the one where Garrett almost folded Kings to the six bet. I don't know if you saw that 145,000. Mm -hmm, yeah. So that was when Tiger had seven, six and he flopped it on seven, six, six and Garrett had 10, eight of spades and had a straight flush combo draw and then hit the spade on the turn. So he kept betting, betting, betting. So he had the flush. And then at the end he over bet kind of Garrett style with the flush and Tiger min raised him where I said like, Oh wow. I think if Tiger check jams from what I've seen from Garrett, he's just going to fold. So he actually min raised him here. Mm. Maybe you go 500. 
I mean, it looks like you go, so, so you have what you want 40, 240, it got checked through. You've got 1400, right? In your stack here, uh, five to six, maybe check raise yeah. to five to six. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. That's, yeah. That seems logical. Yeah. I, I bet 675. So maybe okay. that's a hair big. Okay. And he tanked for a couple minutes and called. Did he ever reveal? Yeah, he showed uh, King Ten offsuit. King Ten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So not as he was not as tight preflop as I thought. Wow. I guess. Well, <laughs> by flatting, right? You win this interesting. You can get to this interesting spot. So he opened King Ten off from, uh, and then he called your small raise. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, called I wonder. Small raise, yeah. You know what's funny, Charlie, is is that. So we can derive several things here from this hand, right? The fact that he opened King Ten off. You know, I said, you can always take away something. Uh, I, I point back to an old podcast where I made this ridiculous fold with aces against this guy that I didn't know. This was years ago at Commerce. And then a couple rounds later, I saw him limp in with like Jack six suited for mid position. And I'm like, oh my God, like how <laughs> could I possibly have not known? He had over, no, I folded bottom two. He had aces. He had overplaying aces. I'd never seen him before. I just wonder, the fact that he opened King 10 off from under the gun, if I knew that he opened that and then i was in your spot on the river i might check raise more larger because it doesn't seem to me like that he's probably good enough to fold just based on that i mean i know it's a little bit of information but yeah i mean that's that's quite possible and it probably gives him more king x combos too yeah well charlie i really appreciate it thank you very much for the call again look for the third man walking podcast coming very soon to crush live poker and uh, good luck at the tables, Charlie.